All right, who do we have here? <laughs> this is my daughter, Heather. Uh, she's, uh, she's cute. There she is. And because, uh, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I did state of mind with, with Joshua and with Paula and I'm trying to get my other two daughters and uh, Buddy the Goat and, you know, people like that. <laughs> but, oh, oh, wait a minute. You're pregnant. Oh, yeah. When are you, <laughs> when are you due? <laughs> September 29th. But you can't, you could have it right now, right? Any moment. Because I could like, I could help you with the baby or you're just going to have... Well, it wouldn't go that fast, but it'd be but cool the, if my the, water broke. This thing could go viral if the water... Can you make it go right now? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right, yeah, she's going to have, I want to be a grandfather, which is, uh, it's amazing. I love babies. I love uh, kids. I love animals. Um, I love, you know, life. All right, now let's get into state of mind, Heather. All right. I'm going to ask you what I asked Paula, and I'm going to ask you what I asked Joshua. What is it like? living or what was it like or living with a father who's has mental illness manic you know bipolar anxiety depression i would say interesting in a good way like had didn't really live through your breakdown so no. it wasn't like chaos it was more of like something cool to see an adult go through something and adapt and overcome and be a better person because of it. Wow. So kind of cool, not to say that mental health is cool, but never dull, never boring in the house. Now I used to, we used to have uh, sissy come out every summer. Uh, and I'll get to why this is a little different is because she's adopted. So I can you know, it's, a, but we used to have her come out every summer with her sister, uh, God rest her soul. And she was so cute. It's like, she looked like a young Diana Ross. <laughs> and I used to make fun of her. Remember when I used to say, uh, don't say your mom. Your mom, I used to say, <laughs> your mom can't cook. And then Sissy used to say to me, she can't cook. <laughs> but during, because I don't know this, but during that period, like when you used to come as a little girl, what, did you ever see me? Not in a nervous breakdown, I don't think, but like with anxiety or depression, or did you ever notice anything uh, off or? No, nothing like that. More of just so you're a little more intimidating. Mm. Yeah, like I remember a few times being left alone with you and then like <laughs> not knowing what to say. <laughs> but like I felt like you're really cool, so like trying to make it work. Ah. Uh, but yeah, nothing like off putting or anything like that. But now you know when you when you um when Paula got cancer, mm -hmm. maybe you weren't living in the house, uh at that time, but I, I had major, I I just, yeah, I think I, uh, I had major anxiety, but I don't think you saw that either. I think a little bit. Well, I saw it, how it affected mom. Uh, so kind of, kind of filtered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember one time during that period when, when mom got cancer, um, oh man. I remember uh, going out to the room and I was in bad shape. And I remember, and I'm not lying, I turned on the TV and I went to make some coffee. And there was a preacher there who, who just said, I lived my whole life with anxiety. And nobody knows how difficult it really is. And I remember sitting behind the TV, just watching that. And, you know, for me, all that is like a sign, you know, like a sign from God or something that's... <sighs> anyway. Um, 
So I want to talk to you about, because I'm a little bit emotional in that little area. First of all, I want to say we adopted Heather at 15. 14, 15. 14, 15. And I remember with Heather having a conversation with her. This is kind of personal, but it's all right. Where I said to her, you, you got two roads you can go on. You can go on this road, but you're going to be with your friends and you're going to party and this and this and that. And I consider that the bad road or you can stay with us. You remember when I said this? It's fine. I, we'll keep going because it's not ringing a bell so far. Yeah. And I said, or you can go on this road, which is staying with us and not, you know, living somewhere else or whatever it was. And we're going to give you a great life. And you chose us. I didn't choose the party life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's funny. I don't exactly remember that conversation, but I do like having a strong, like, I don't want to do the party thing. I want to do the right thing and be good. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, do you remember what you said in the bedroom after you were adopted and it was all official and everything and you asked mom something. You remember what you asked mom? No. <laughs> Taz. I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, what did you ask her? You tell me and then I'll tell you I remember. You asked her if she if you could do something. Oh, okay. If I could call her mom. Yeah, and I and I just Bald like a baby, but you guys left the room. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you guys left the room and I started bawling. I don't know, you know, I thought it was the most beautiful thing yeah. that I'd ever seen, that moment of you asking that. And I don't, maybe somebody else wouldn't have thought it was that big a deal, but for me, it was just so simple and beautiful. And then my mom started crying, and I don't know, you kind of, yeah. you kind of had. <laughs> You kind of had tears, and but not. I, I think I cried more than anybody. Um, all right. So uh, what I want to the next thing is now is we during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I couldn't run anymore or hide anymore because what I try to do with my illness is keep it from my children, like I've said before. And I've done it for the most part. No one, no one, you know, maybe they'd seen a little anxiety here and there, but nothing major. But during the pandemic, this was a real, real tough time for me. Maybe one of the, the hardest times I've ever had in my whole life to the point of just to a tough, uh, you know, I don't want to say what I was thinking or whatever. I just, I'm saying it was very, very difficult. And one of the things that made it real difficult for me was that everybody would come over and I would have to come out of my room. Because I couldn't run, I couldn't, what am I going to do? I got to eat, right? Everybody's eating dinner. I and I remember, you know, Heather would come over with her husband, Phil. And uh, I just, I felt so ashamed that they would see me in that state. Now, they all love me. It's not about that. And they don't judge me, but in my mind. Now, when you would see me, what did I look like? Like dark. Like, I don't feel like you looked any different. It was more of like that anxiety feeling around you. Yeah. It was dark. How was that energy? I may, it kind of like... It made me a little anxious. 
it's kind of like if someone's comfortable with something, then I'm comfortable with it. But if someone's not comfortable, then I'm a little more self-aware that they're not comfortable. And then it kind of, the anxiety transfers back and forth. But we never discussed, oh yeah, we, did. we didn't really discuss, I don't know if you and I did, you, me and Phil, your, your husband did. Yeah. We discussed anxiety and stuff. Yeah. But I was mostly, it's just, just feeling ashamed, yeah. And I didn't need, I know I didn't, I didn't need to be. But I think what it is, is, and, and this is a, this may be for people who, who are where I was at that level. Maybe in our minds, we think we're worse than we are. We, we look worse than we are. Doesn't mean we're not bad inside. But physically, I was kind of the same or not? Well, I think anxiety is, some of it is extreme self-awareness. So you're, yeah. you know what you're feeling when someone else necessarily maybe doesn't. Yeah. But you're completely aware how you're feeling, so you assume that the other person can see it and feel it. Right, right. I, that's like one of the pitfalls. So, but I would wouldn't I walk slower? Yeah, you'd walk kind of slower. You kind of would like be moving at all times. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of could see you zoned out sometimes. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Damn. It's all like internal. Yeah, it's internal. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of when you're at that level with anxiety, a lot of that is uh, it starts becoming physical. Yeah. Because I started I started this I've never talked about. I started shaking, man. Like every hour when I go to sleep, I was like this, and I said to Paul, I said, I said, honey, she goes, it's gonna be fine, honey. That's just normal. I said, normal. <laughs> I mean, I'm shaking like a leaf here, man. Uh boy. Anyway, this has been kind of emotional for me. Yeah. It's nice. All right, what I want to end this on is, uh, listen, what I, uh, you know, I thought, of, I thought of something, and I want to say it now. I think I put it out somewhere, but I do want to say it because during this, this, these periods of high manic episode, depression, we, we tend to suffer, right? But what I came, something came to my head and it's suffer, suffering is learning. Because truly when you suffer is when you learn. But we don't, we don't believe that when we're in it. We think it's yeah. just the, the horrible. No, but if you, you got to understand that if you stay in it and you get through it, you've learned a lot. And what I've learned is I should have from the beginning been open with my children and, and let them see what the illness is. Because what happens is by not doing it, it doesn't really, I don't think it affects the kids, but it affects you more because then you're gonna, did I ever think in my life there was gonna be a pandemic where I'd be forced <laughs> to, for you guys to see me? <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, I, I could have hidden it my whole life, but we never know what's going to happen in life. So just always, I like to always be an open book and be open. And I want to say to uh, Heather and Sissy, they're both the same. I appreciate today because it was a very, very, uh, it was very good. Very good talk. And, uh, We'll do it again next week. Maybe another one of my family. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or me again. Or, or, or Heather again. 